If there is one thing nearly all language learners can agree upon, it's this. Language learning is a slow process. Most people learn for months or years before they see serious results. For that reason, many learners develop an obsession with speed. How can I learn more in less time? What if you could take any stretch of time, be it one month, one week, or even one day, and maximize your learning so that at the end of that time, you've learned 10 times more than nearly anyone else could? Intrigued? Well, watch this video and I'll show you how. Hi, I'm Luca Ramparello. I'm a language coach who speaks 14 languages, and on this channel, I help people learn foreign languages faster, more efficiently, and in a fun way. In this video, I'll be sharing some tips for making big progress in a short amount of time. Let's start with a little story, which I also talked about in my video, How to Learn Any Language Super Fast, my three-month plan, and which is, again, worth mentioning here. I started learning Hungarian in 2016. In late 2022, almost seven years later, I had a chance to visit Budapest again and put some of my Hungarian skills to the test. There, I reconnected with a friend I had made a few months earlier at the Polyglot conference in Terezin. His name was Jonathan, and he was from Belgium. We spoke a bit of Hungarian, and when I saw him interact with native speakers, I was absolutely floored. Jonathan's Hungarian was so natural that I could scarcely believe he wasn't Hungarian himself. Since I had been learning Hungarian for more than half a decade by then, I was convinced that he had probably been learning for more than double that, if not more. So I asked him how long he had been learning. His answer? Two years. What? Two years? It seemed impossible. Naturally, I asked him to explain how he did it. Jonathan then proceeded to tell me about how, when he came to Hungary for the first time, he joined an intensive one-year language program where he was required to learn and do everything in Hungarian from the get-go. This gave him his first initial boost at learning the language, which was then followed by a second. He started dating a Turkish woman who he shared no other language with aside from Hungarian. So, even though his girlfriend wasn't a native speaker, simply having to constantly speak and use Hungarian with someone forced Jonathan to quickly grow his skills. And since he was in Hungary this whole time, they grew even faster as a result. So, for two years, Jonathan essentially lived and breathed the Hungarian language without recourse to French, his mother tongue. If I were to summarize, the secret to Jonathan's success was intensity, which is something that is often missing from most language learning routines. When learning their own target language or languages, most people cannot or won't do what Jonathan did to learn Hungarian. Rather than filling most of their waking hours with exposure to the language, they instead opt to learn for a small amount of time each day, or less. Heck, even I recommend to most people to avoid learning for more than, say, 30 minutes to one hour each day, and I consider myself an experienced language learner. Why do people engage in low-intensity learning if the alternative high-intensity strategy gets more impressive results? I think there's one main reason. High-intensity learning takes a lot of time, a lot of energy, and a lot of effort. If you don't manage these things well, you risk burning yourself out, which may decrease your capacity or desire to learn languages again in the future. Lots of learners do try the high-intensity learning route, only to give it up when it becomes too much. Alternatively, they like to learn in a high-intensity way, but they do not have the resources to even attempt it. So, high-intensity learning can lead to great results, but it's a costly endeavor. It demands a lot from you, and if you don't handle it carefully, you can risk burnout. Acknowledging the high-risk, high-reward nature of intense language learning is probably enough for most people. They either take on the risk, or they don't. Simple as that. But what if there were a way to adjust the formula so that we could get a lot of that reward while mitigating the potential risk? What if we wanted to transform high-intensity learning into a low-risk, high-reward scenario? Well, we can, and I have five quick tips that can help you do just that. Let's get started. Tip number one, participate in a three-month language learning challenge. Even if you'd like to pull off something like my friend Jonathan's two-year intensive stint to learning Hungarian in Budapest, it's unlikely you could or would even want to. Most of us have things like work, family, and, well, long distances standing in our way. And for many, these things cannot be put aside for two days, let alone for two years. The easiest way to learn intensively, then, would be to try to replicate the intensive experience from home without having to travel and without having to spend two years doing it. Luckily, there are plenty of opportunities to do this. 
typically in the form of online language learning challenges. While they all have their own unique qualities, most language challenges follow the same patterns. In short, these challenges require you to basically do two things. One, commit to a specific, usually intensive learning goal, and two, complete this goal within a specified period of time. The actual length of the challenge can vary, but in my experience, most of the ones you'll find give you approximately three months to complete your goal. That's how things work for the two challenges I run in my own online school, uh, the Spark Language Learning Academy, for my beginner and intermediate language courses. During the challenge, we'll share a spreadsheet where students tick a box every time they complete their daily activities for the channel. Let me tell you this, the joy, the commitment, and the results students get constantly fill me with a lot of joy. Challenges provide a great way to inject some intensity into your life and language learning without forcing you to commit to maintaining that intensity for a lengthy period of time. Three months of intensive learning is certainly a lot more manageable than two years, and you can always go back to your more laid back routine once you've finished the challenge. Tip number two, sign up for a one month language camp. If you feel like you're up for something a little more adventurous than an online learning challenge, there's always the next option, signing up for an in-person intensive language camp abroad. Compared to a three-month challenge, this is a bit more similar to what my friend Jonathan did. To participate in such a camp, you would typically have to actually go abroad and physically attend lessons and other activities where use of your target language is required. At a camp like this, you would do your best to learn and use your target language pretty much all the time. This forces your brain to quickly adapt to the language and prevents you from using your target language as a crutch. This can be super stressful, but also super rewarding once you come out on the other side. You could always do a lengthy program like my friend Jonathan did for Hungarian, but I'm specifically recommending the short camps and courses that only last a few weeks to a few months. This will give you a taste of high intensity language learning, but won't require you to sacrifice years of your life to get it. If you're interested in participating in a program like this, I recommend that you search online. In the country or countries where your target language is spoken, most big cities will have several such programs that you can participate in. If you're lucky, you might even find similar programs in your own home country. Americans, for example, can sign up for short immersion programs in over a dozen languages at Middlebury College in Vermont. Tip number three, take frequent short trips to the country. My next tip is for those who can travel to learn but cannot commit to doing so for more than a week or two at a time. In cases like this, the best way to maximize your learning within a short period of time is actually travel to the country where your target language is spoken and try to learn as much as you can while you are there. As I've mentioned in a specific video I made about how to maximize your time while abroad, this is not a strategy I recommend for beginners since there's simply too much to adjust to if you have to both learn the language from scratch and figure out how to survive in a foreign country. That being said, learners at the intermediate skill level or beyond can really boost their skills by heading abroad and simply use the language as much as possible. The key here is to spend what little time you have in the country participating in learning opportunities that you would not otherwise be able to. For example, you'll probably never have better access to native speakers of your target language than when you are traveling through the places where they live and where they work. So do what you can to communicate with them as much as you can. Ask questions, make conversation, and listen to what they have to say. Simply being immersed in the same environment as them will do wonders for your language skills. Tip four, hang out with native speakers that live in your area. This tip is similar to the last, but the advantage is that you probably will not have to leave home to do it. For this one, my advice is to try to find native speakers of your target language that live somewhere nearby and then actually hang out with them. How easy or how difficult this is will depend on exactly where you live, but in general, finding local native speakers is becoming easier and easier to do. Many popular language learning apps allow you to search for and contact native speakers according to city, town, or zip code, and some even allow you to find people who are in your immediate vicinity and willing to chat. If meeting one-on-one -on -one is not your thing, then you can also use event platforms like Meetup to find language-themed events in your area. Even if you live in a place where you think native speakers would be hard to find, it's worth a look. There could be a language group nearby with a native speaker or two. Once you find a native speaker to chat with, the next thing to do is simply spend time with them. If you're both open to it, there's no reason why you could not do a regular one-on-one -on -one language exchange or even hang out with them more casually.
Whenever you do spend time with a native speaker, just remember that you have a great opportunity to learn a lot in a short period of time. So be curious, ask questions, and above all, try to have a good time. Even if something that may appear to others like a casual hangout can actually be an intensive language learning activity. Some of my periods of fastest language learning progress have come from meeting natives and showing them around my hometown. So it's something I highly recommend. Tip number five, if you can, go on dates with native speakers. This last tip is quite powerful, but not something that everyone can do. Date or marry a native speaker of your target language. Being in a relationship with a native speaker is like my last tip, but turned up to 11. Hanging out with a native speaker for a few hours at a time can do wonders for your language learning, but actually living and building a life with a native speaker can push your skills to a level that would be nearly impossible to reach otherwise. When you are in a relationship with another person, you are in nearly constant contact with them. And for the relationship to succeed, you need to be able to communicate your needs and wants at a high level and do so consistently. This is a tall order for two people that speak the same language natively. So to put it off when they're the native speaker and you're the non-native speaker is a huge task that will require a Herculean effort on your part and a similar amount of patience from your partner. If you can pull it off though, the results will be incredible. I've had this experience several times myself, most notably when I was living and studying in France in my late 20s and early 30s. I had a French girlfriend at the time and the amount of French that I learned from her was absolutely staggering. There was an added benefit too. Spending time with her also necessitating spending lots of time with her friends and relatives. So I learned a lot about the language from them as well. So if you're single and have an opportunity to go on dates with a native, I'd say give it a try. Of course, I don't think you should ever date someone just because they speak your target language natively, but if you two have a real spark, then you'll have an intensive language learning experience like no other. All right, those are my tips for maximizing your language learning over a short period of time. Following these tips will allow you to extract the most language learning value from any short sprint, be it a few hours, a few days, a few weeks, or a few months. Let's quickly review the tips. One, participate in a three month language learning challenge. Two, sign up for a one month language camp. Three, take frequent short trips to the country. Four, hang out with native speakers that live in your area. Five, if you can, go on dates with native speakers. If you'd like to try intensive language learning for yourself, then I recommend signing up for one of the courses in my Become a Master Language Learner series. I've got one course for beginners and another one for intermediate learners. And if you sign up for those, then you'll be able to join intensive three month language learning challenges, which we do several times a year for each course. If you're interested, then look down in the description box for more information. Thanks for watching. And as always, happy language learning.